of today is this, free your mind. Because as I've passed through the last uh, 20 years of researching this mega subject all over the world in about 50 countries now, it's very clear that the way people are controlled en masse in ways that so many people do not even begin to understand, even those that think that they have some control of their own thoughts, the way it's done is through the mind. Because human behavior comes from human perception, which produces human thought, which produces human behavior. If you get in at the, at the level of perception, then you control the rest, the thought and behavior. Free your mind. But it's even bigger than that, as I'll get to. And through the day, I'm going to, in this first section, look at what is crucial to see before the second session, which would be a mega session, number two, um, really falls into clarity and focus. Because the first part is about who are we, where are we, and what is this reality we are experiencing. If we don't know that, then everything that happens within this reality is um, a mystery. Uh, because we don't even understand what the reality is. So how can we understand truly what's going on within it and what we're experiencing every day? So that's the first part um, today. How we break out of being this robotic herd for thousands of years to the present day, whereby, because of that mentality, a tiny few people can manipulate and direct the lives of, at present, closing in on 7 billion. It is possible not to be like everyone else. It is possible to be different. But of course the pressure is to conform because being different in so many areas of the world is a crime. Where those who are not different police anyone that seeks to be. It is possible to swim in the other direction. Because just because everyone's going that way doesn't mean it's the best way to go. It just means that's the way everyone's going. But everybody knows that. Everybody knows that, mate. Come on, everyone knows this is the right way. Well, I don't know that. There's one less than everyone. We've made a start. This is a great line by a guy called John Mason. You were born original, don't die a copy. But how many people born original die copies? And because we do, we allow the few to dictate the herd, the shoal, whatever you want to call it, of human people all being the same thing, effectively. Great line from uh, Giordano Bruno, great thinker of his time. Truth does not change because it is or is not believed by the majority of the people. Majority of the people might believe that 2, 2 equals 5, but it equals 4, according to our version of mathematics anyway. So it doesn't matter if 7 billion people minus 1 believe it equals 5, it continues to equal 4. You don't have to be in the majority to be accurate in what you say. In fact, this is a wonderful proverb. The multitude is always wrong. And through history, invariably we've seen this. The multitude today believes that human carbon emissions cause global warming and climate change. The multitude believe that. It's a bloody nonsense scientifically, but the multitude believe that. Why? Because that's what the multitude are told day after day after day. What were the multitude told a few centuries ago? That the earth was flat and if you went far enough you dropped off the edge. That was the norm of that society. And if you said actually it was a sphere, you were either dangerous, a crank or crazy. But then it was shown to be a sphere. 
And then that became the new norm, which the multitude believed. And now anyone that says it's flat gets called crazy or a crank. It's just the norm moves, so the perception and the reaction moves. And who dictates the norms? Those few in society, in politics and science and finance and education, who tell us what the norms are. The world is so crazy, it thinks it's sane. I love that one where we believe that we're on the cutting edge of human evolution and human existence when millions of people are dying through lack of food in a world of plenty where we're pepper bombing cities of civilians and where most people in the world get up in the morning do things they don't want to do just to earn the money to survive another day to get up tomorrow morning and do things they don't want to do again and we call it life and we call it the modern world it's insane We live in a world where we borrow money from banks that doesn't exist. It's just figures on a screen. And we pay the buggers interest on it. Where, where people starve in a world of plenty. Where we're pepper bombing Baghdad to bring peace. And where we pollute the planet, the very sustenance like water, etc. And soil that we need to survive in this reality. But no. This is the modern world, but it's crazy. Why is it crazy? Is it crazy because the people running the world are crazy? Or is it because it has an outcome that actually leads to the few controlling the many? I suggest the latter. There's this great um, uh, saying or statement from this guy, Michael Elner, writer. Just look at us. Everything is backwards, everything is upside down. Doctors destroy health, lawyers destroy justice, universities destroy knowledge, governments destroy freedom, the major media destroy information, and religions destroy spirituality. Staggering, but true. Why? Because the world is insane. Why? Is it insane? The question will answer. To keep us from understanding and to keep us bewildered, through our lives we have all these directions and misdirections. So life's like a maze. Oh, don't go that way. Left is right, up is down, black is white. Just to keep us in the pen, in the maze, so we can't work our way out of it. But when you take the dots, that's what I've been doing for 20 years, taking dots, different subjects, people, organizations, the massive spectrum of things, which appear on the surface to be completely unconnected. But when you connect them, suddenly a picture starts to appear. And that's what we don't do. And society is structured to make sure the dots do not get connected. It takes a lot of work. And when you do, Suddenly the world starts to look very different and at last, at last, it starts to make sense. Why is this world so crazy? Why is authority and administration and bureaucracy so incompetent? Well, maybe it's not at the highest level. Maybe the incompetence is just leading to an outcome that suits the agenda. Maybe it's not comp incompetence at all. Maybe it's bloody genius, which on one level it is. So when did pieces start getting put together? And this is why I'm talking for so long today. Putting these pieces together as we go along, as the picture gets more and more uh, obvious. Then you start to see the world in a completely different way. And what appears to be chaos takes on the view of being brilliantly coordinated. And becomes the elephant in the living room. Because once the, the dots are connected, suddenly it's... Oh my goodness, I can see it now. Oh, you couldn't see it before. Why? The dots weren't connected. Everything was like, what's going on? What's happening? 
Oh, hell, there you go. And that elephant in the living room is that there are two flows happening in this world, two major flows, two major realities. One is a secret agenda by a, a network of interbreeding families and their global secret society network, which is pushing the world incessantly and ever faster towards a centralized global dictatorship, a global version of Nazi Germany and then some. And the movie, as I call it, is how the changes in society that are bringing about that global dictatorship are explained away as unconnected to all the other changes that are building that global fascist state. The movie, what we see on the national news, what we get from education and what passes for it often, uh, what we get through information in all its forms in the mainstream is simply there to give cover for that. And it's been so brilliantly done and orchestrated that 99% of the people in the movie, news readers, journalists, etc., teachers, professors, haven't got a clue that they're actually giving cover for this grotesque agenda. But crucially, the crucial thing, the bottom line that makes this possible is from cradle to grave to give people a false identity, a false sense of who they are. We have what, coming up to 7 billion people in the world now? How many of that 7 billion know who they are? They know who they think they are. They think they're the person they see in the mirror. They think they're their body. Ooh, could lose a bit of weight. Ooh, bum's a bit big. Oh, look good today. Hey, building the muscles up. All these different expressions of the physical body, that's me. But it isn't. But if we think it is, then we become uh, someone living a... A massive form of, I guess you'd call it schizophrenia, where we're living a false identity. And that's crucial to everything that goes on in this world. We are consciousness. We're not form. Form is the vehicle for consciousness to experience this reality. But the false identity that we're manipulated to have and therefore pulls us and pushes us into a sense of limitation, a sense of little me, a sense of what can I do, That is when we identify with the body. I am Charlie Smith. I am Ethel Jones. And we forget who we really are, which is consciousness. All that is, has been, ever can be. Instead, when we identify self with Charlie Smith and Ethel Jones, I am the reflection in the mirror, that is who I am, then we end up in what I call the eggshells in little bubbles of awareness which identifies not with infinite self but with physical self. And when you're not identified with infinite self and you identify with bubble self, then where are you going to look to get an understanding of who you are, where you are, and the nature of life in this world. There. Out there. Through the eyes and the ears. That's where you're looking to tell you all the big things you need to know. And who controls that? The very network of families that I'm going to expose today. We have to become conscious. I mean, when you think about it, you're born in the world, and then you start a cycle. It's not a cycle which flows often, most of the time, um, it, with, with um, a, a freedom that flows where it wants to flow. It locks into a program. Certain age you do certain things. Then you go to school. And nice teachers and then professors and people in university 
They tell you what life is, what facts are, everything, what you are, and all the rest of it, and all the latest scientific knowledge and all this stuff. And then you get married, and you have a family, and you get your kids, and they grow up, and they go through the same system, and you keep getting old, and, and now you, you're, you've been battling all your life, competing with everyone else, because you've got to compete. We can't cooperate, we've got to compete. I want that big job, and if I don't get it, if I uh, get it, rather, it means he's not getting it, so I've got to stop him getting it, so I get it. Oh, competition, fight, greasy pole. And then you start getting a little bit older, and, and your body starts to go, and then you start thinking about, what's going to happen when I die? Oh, you know, what is it? it uh, I better start saying nice things and join the church or something, because I have to have a bit of insurance, you know, in case. And then you go around and you reach a point where you just hope that there is some God out there that's going to be kind to you because that you have been told you could go to hell and give it some of that, you see. I've just described life for vast, vast numbers of people. I mean, can we really not do better than that? Is that all we really are? But what does that serve? What does that sequence I've just described serve? It serves the system that treats us as mere pawns within it, mere cogs within its machine. And therefore we serve that which controls the machine. It's not because that's how it has to be, it's because that's how it's been manipulated to be. As I saw these pictures on the internet. There are people um, running in water to get fit, you know. And of course the water's coming. Got to keep the water from coming up, you know. Got to pay the mortgage at the end of the month. Got to keep running, can't stop. Bloody hell, you see the bills? Bloody hell. And it's interesting, they're looking at the telly. Because most of, most of us are doing this all the time, aren't we? Exactly that. We call it life. And it's like a bloody software disk. Just running through its program. Not just a program for one person, but program for vast, vast numbers of people. It's like a computer game. As we get through this first section today, uh, we might see it is a computer game. And what's happening is we're being hypnotized all the time through education and media and religion and all this stuff so that we don't see what this really is. So we don't see how the dots connect and therefore what we're really experiencing. It's a mind game, like I said right at the start. If you don't control people's minds, you can't control their behavior and uh, their perception. You can't keep them in this state if you don't control their minds. And so we have these prisons of the mind, religion. Here's some rules and regulations. We've called it a religion, but they're rules and regulations. And if you don't keep to them, then you're not in that religion anymore. You're a blasphemer. And here's some politics. If, if, you, if, you're, if you say that, you're not a socialist. If you say that, you're not a democrat. You're not a conservative. Rules and regulations. I have to conform to them or I'm not one of them. Thank you, God. Race. Oh, you, you're a traitor to your race. Why? I'm just doing the just thing in this situation. Okay, he's from a different race from me, but in the just situation here, He's right. He can't be. He's not the same race as me. He must be wrong. Races played off against each other. Divide and rule. Keep the multi 